When last we left off, you folks had just re-emerged from the sandy dungeon below Rubble Point. Uh, you slept uh, through the night among the ruins, uh, back out in the desert. Uh, some rather disturbingly large ants were observed by Bref and uh, and Mavra. Uh, Mavra. I was trying to do it without looking. Um, Bref and Mavra. Uh, is it Mavra or Mavra? Mavra. Okay, Mavra. Uh, Bref and Mavra observed uh, these ants uh, skeletonizing some corpses of the um, of the basilisks that your party has slain and left most to uh, lie roundabout and dry in the desert sun or be eaten by ants in this case. Uh... But you guys have awakened the next morning. You've broken down camp. You've rolled up your bedrolls. You've dusted off the sand from your clothes and folded up any tents you may have. Uh, kicked dirt over the coals uh, among the ruin. I think I see Haley possibly typing. Perhaps Haley will be joining us soon. Uh, okay. <laughs> I need to not be distracted by memes. Uh, take them to the off-topic thread? I don't know. Um, but they're relevant to our conversation. <laughs> yes, they're relevant to the conversation, but also I need to see what Haley is saying. <laughs> Haley is back in yes. the Game of Thrones. All right. Got it. Okay. I'm, I guess Haley will be jumping in momentarily. Uh, so yes, you've brushed off... Um, sorry, it's just that unicorn is not doing what unicorns are supposed to do. Um, the uh, You've brushed sand off and you've broken camp and it is... Uh, it is the uh, relatively early morning, I think, uh, as you guys actually bedded down earlier, uh, getting some extra rest uh, after staying up all night uh, and into the wee hours um, during your dungeon delve more than once. Um... So, I think you guys are ready to travel. Quick question. Uh, Paul and Alexis, uh, you guys often have your cameras on. Are you? Do you both have them off intentionally? Mine's on, and I can see it on my end. Ah. Yes, I see Paul, but Danielle, uh, she can see you now, Max. Earlier she couldn't. She can also not see Paul. Um. Oh. I'll hit reconnect and see what happens. All right. Oh, there's Haley. I don't have a webcam. Oh, okay. No worries, Alexis. Hello. Haley, welcome. So I hit reconnect. I see Max. I see Jeremy. That's it. And me. Well, it's just roll 20 being silly. I'm going to live with that for now. Um, I risked to reconnect and it made everything worse. Should have just lived with it. Uh, God, that's so annoying. Um, or I'll, I can see me and Jeremy now. Because I messed everything else up. Um, okay. You've broken down camp. Oh, there's Paul popping in. Yay. So I lost Danielle and Haley, but I gained Paul. <laughs> um, I don't 
I don't think I'd take that trade. Yeah, I was gonna say, it sounds like a bad trade off. <laughs> well, two for one, I mean. It's a bit rough. Um, okay. What do you guys want to do? You are at Rubble Point. You have finished the dungeon. You had some interesting conversations and a lot of interesting dreams throughout the night. It was somewhat of a restless night and not just because of the ants. I think we decided to go back to um, um, Taurine and A, see if it's still there, and B, get our money. If she, if, if, if Stray's there, C, uh, take Kronk, Kronk, Stronk, Fronk, Kronk, Kronk, yes, to back to see what's up with his bar and maybe D kind of chill out and maybe restock on some things. Yeah, I think we need to make it back to town as, if not least to help Kronk take revenge. So, my 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 view is, part of me wants to go up to eleven fourteen on the map, uh, just because we haven't been there, but that does get us even closer to eleven thirteen, where our good friend the red dragon is, and you know, we wouldn't exactly be going into their territory, but. I figure the further away we stay from the Red Dragon, the better we'd be. I mean, it's kind of a roundabout route back home, but it, or home, but back to town. Um, but, you know, if, if Krant is amenable, maybe he knows what's there. Or what, at least what used to be there 200 years ago. What direction do folks want to travel? Um, and we're at, we're, we're okay. Which one are we at right now? I had, oh, we're oh, at eleven nice. fifteen, right? Yeah. And which direction did we come in? We came. We came in from twelve fifteen. We went okay, thirteen that's... fourteen, twelve fifteen, eleven fifteen. Okay, that's 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 kind of what I thought. Okay. So it'd just be like an upward hook, you know, kind of loop. I don't know if I want to check out 11.13, man. Oh, no, 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 no. We won't go to 11.13. Okay. I just don't know if we even want to go as close as 11.14. Just because that red dragon oh. was not happy when we left. Right, right, right. Right, 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 right. Just to fill in that spot on the map, kind of. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um... I could be talked into that. What does everybody else think? Okay, sorry. Tell me the plan again. I was thinking about Game of Thrones. <laughs> okay. So we're thinking of instead of going... So currently we're at 11.15 on the map, right? And the place where we're going, um, we went through 12.15 in order to get back to Tarine. Um, Tarine's at 13.13? Yeah, it's at 13, isn't it? So we're thinking of instead going north through 11, 14, 12, 14, because we haven't filled in 11, 14 yet to just kind of see what's there. But we're worried because that's only one day's travel away from Cheese Death. I would say if we do go to 11, 14, that doesn't look like we're traveling through the desert. And since I'm an outlander, I can uh, provide any food and water that we need while going through 11, 14, because it looks more forested or mountainous, actually. So you're in favor of going through the woods in order to possibly be able to find supplies more easily? Yeah. I mean, we're not, like, desperate right now, but... It's we do have an extra way. mouth to feed. That's true. And That's I can true. feed five people. 
I mean, because Krant, you know, the rest of us have some amount of supplies, but Krant, of course, doesn't have anything. Mm -hmm. So we need to keep him alive for three days until we get back to town. I appreciate the consideration, says Krant Threefinger. All right. Well, Unless anybody has an objection, let's 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 go north, and then make our way sort of northeast. Yeah, it and if we're in the woods, like I mean, maybe we like maybe it would be easier for people to assist Krim. Uh, I know that she can forage on her own, but like with hunting checks and stuff like that, you know. It's going to be an easier check if we're in the woods to find some kind of, you know, animals to eat and stuff. I assume. Yeah, that sounds good. And how's, how's there any objections? I think we're going north. Let's go! Alright, then let's head north. Having packed up your worldly possessions, the whole gang of you begins to travel north, taking Krant Three Finger with you. Equitus. Yes, sir. You didn't even realize the pressure that was building up inside, kind of behind your eyes in your forehead uh, until you start traveling north. But it's almost like something's pulling you uh, from the forehead. Uh, and it's kind of a, a relief from pain that you didn't even re quite realize that you oh, were feeling. Oh, it's a relief. Good. Okay. To head, uh, to head north. You feel like you feel like you're following the path that uh, you were supposed to go on, in a sense. Or at least going more closely toward it. Alright, so my, uh, my mood would probably get a little noticeably brighter as we continue. Uh, and your thoughts are full of that... Blind Elf. The Merchant. Philanthropist. <laughs> the Merchant Friend Philanthropist. Friend to the poor. Fitzywell. I didn't say to the poor. I mean, because it's so controversial, I just kind of have this headcanon that he's like single-handedly responsible for fantasy Planned Parenthood. But I could be wrong. He's building St. Jude's, the medieval version of St. Jude's. He's funding that himself. How are all of the elves going to get their pap smears now, Paul? I, I'm going to leave that one alone. So, you uh, you travel north carrying these things and with uh, some new treasures uh, that you're carrying. Um... Did I skip over, uh, at some point, did somebody say that they were examining one of the newly found, uh, items and, uh, I, over a I, short that rest? Was, that was something I was actually going to bring up, because yes, I, I know, somebody else may also, but I, I know I had said, I had that, the talking staff and yeah. the bracers. Mm -hmm. You looked and, over the bracers. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, well, should you wish to attune to them, um, these, uh, etched bracers with the interesting patterns, uh, that I've already described on them, uh, if you attune to them, they will grant you a permanent mage armor effect. Well, heck yeah, isn't that like plus... Yes. Yes, yes. It's gonna It'll be give you a, a, an armor class of 13 plus your dex. Okay. Dex uh, bonus. Uh, that's going to give me exactly the armor class I have now. Hmm. 
but without armor? Well, yeah. How would that work? Because well, it doesn't. It doesn't stack. Uh, oh, you can't okay. have multiple armors. Ah, uh, I got you. I got you. I got you. Okay. Well, at then... least I think that's how it works. Well, if I recall correctly, the way that mage armor works is doesn't it give you like a minimum, like it raises your minimum armor class from that's 10 just how to whatever? all that's just how all armor works now. Um, oh. So yes, it, it, it mage armor is thirteen plus dex modifier. Um, so I don't know what kind of armor Equitus is wearing. Probably leather or studded leather. I have a leather and a shield. There you go. So, I mean, then you could no longer have to carry your leather and shield, freeing up like I don't know. Encumbrance. Does the shield add on top of the armor? It might be able to be combined with mage armor. It. Uh, yeah, the shield added plus two on top of my armor. Ah, so your AC would actually go up by plus two, because your mage armor could replace the leather armor. Okay. All right. Then I shall do that. I'll go naked, save. Well, you can still wear the leather armor. <laughs> well, <laughs> As clothing. you don't have to. <laughs> you don't have to, no. You have to. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, you never had to do anything. <laughs> Except kill the merchant Fitzywell. Alright. <laughs> or face the consequences. Alright. So is there a way that I can add that in roll twenty to easily do that? Or do I just need to remember it? Uh the mage armor? Yeah. Or uh, can I just Because it's a permanent mage I mean I guess I could just add mage armor and just always have it cast? Uh, yeah, I guess just notate the item mm -hmm. and change your armor class. Okay. Alright. Bracer is magic. Probably in your gear on your core Ray. page. So, okay. I just wanted okay, to... Tell me again how much it would, how much it'll bump me up. If okay. I, I would rather teach you the rules so that you can do yes, it yourself. Okay. Yes, um, yes, that's great. So, uh, so if you look up your shield, it says it adds plus two armor class. Right. Uh, if you look up your leather armor, it sets your armor class as eleven plus your dexterity modifier. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look up mage armor, it says it sets your AC to thirteen, 13 plus, plus your dexterity yeah. modifier. So. You're replacing your pl your 11 plus dex with a 13 plus dex, and then adding the shield on top of that. Okay, I'm just trying to see how I would actually do that in roll 20. In roll 20, I think you just put in a number. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. Do it would on I a just call notepad them, yourself. Would I just call them bracers to add to my equipment? Cause that's oh, gonna auto you wanted to know what the name of the bracers is. Well, I mean... Hang on. I don't have to. Oh, you're going to know. Uh... So without the leather armor, it'd be 13 plus 3 plus 2. Okay. All right. Right? Uh... These are Bracers of the Shaking Leaf. Okay. And they apply a Mage Armor effect if you choose to attune to them. You can only attune to three items, everybody. I, At a time. And maybe, I'll, maybe I'll talk to you about this later, but I'm still... So, okay. So You're raising your AC by two. Okay. Okay. That's pretty much what I... Because it'd be 13 plus... 13 minus plus, 11 is 2, so... Okay. 13 is 2 higher than 11. Right. That's the only number that's changing. Okay. Cool okay. Enough. I got you. Uh, Alright. So now that we've... Uh, now that we're clear on that, hopefully... Uh, I'm sorry about that. You guys... Thank are traveling north. Let's see what the weather is like. As uh, as you guys walk through the desert 
from Rubble Point. Uh, who wants to check the weather? Cordy will do that. Oh, go for it, Cordy. That makes sense. All right. Hashtag or pound sign. Uh, put in a TH. It should pop up the weather, and you can uh, select that macro that I have set up. There it is. It's sunny. Uh, now, it is winter still. Uh, as, what is the date? Is it the 20th of Jaxu in our game? I thought it was the 23rd. 23rd of Jaxu sounds right. I'm just going to double check really quick. Just going to double check. Yes, it is the 23rd of Jaxu. Uh, it is definitely still winter. So it doesn't exactly get hot, but it is sunny. Um... As high as the sun gets this time of year. Uh, and as you trudge along, you definitely feel... Uh, you feel uh, uh, it warming up here in the desert. As you, the occasional lizard uh, sunning itself on a rock scurries away. Uh, the birds call to one another from uh, the various scrub brush all around. And let's see. It's that time where you guys describe uh, as you travel on this sunny day, from uh, the the ground changes from this desert, uh, kind of getting these uh, slightly greener hills. And the hills uh, eventually give uh, sprout some uh, sparse trees, and the trees get thicker. And uh, and before you know it, the kind of uh, semi track that you're following there's not much. Uh, it's not much of a track. There's no road here, but occasionally there seems to be a a path going your way. Um, as you traverse this, you are, you are, uh, eventually walking under the trees. And, uh, it's a pleasant change hearing the birds and, uh, seeing some other plant life, uh, as you seem to be leaving gradually, gradually leaving the desert behind. So, anyone can jump in here and describe how they are helping the party travel. And if you can make a convincing uh, case for, you know, some skill that you're good at, uh, or not good at, I guess, uh, to help how you are helping the party, I'll certainly consider it. So okay. how are you guys going to help uh, the party traverse this terrain safely as you travel north from Rubble Point? Um, Aquitus has a new trick that he can try. Um... As before, or maybe as we start out, I'm going to kind of rub my hands together and some shadowy energy comes off. And I am going to cast... Not much shadowy uh, energy here on this sunny day. <laughs> no call. Um, I don't know. I'm thinking through this. I want to see who I want to cast it on. Um, saving throw or... Oh, that was the magic reconnect. I just got all the cameras back. Yes! Woo! I can see Paul uh, and Haley and, and Danielle now. <laughs> um, I am going to cast Guidance on um... 
Oh, there's Emily. You know who's been really good at these is Bella. I'm going to cast Guidance on Bella. Okay. Uh, nice. Uh, could you read me the text real quick? Yeah, because I'm not... Yeah, and this might have been the wrong thing to cast. You touch one willing creature, once before the spell ends, the target can roll a d4 and add the number rolled to one ability check of its mm-hmm. choice. Or I can cast, if you would rather... Me, I can cast resistance, and that would take care of that. Will add one d4 to a saving throw. For how long does that last, though? One action. Yeah. And one action. So and and. I guess and, I would have to know they were doing something, and then I could do that. Well, I know it does it for one action, but how long does the spell last? Oh, up to one minute for right. guidance. Resi- so I, yeah, both of them up to one I minute. I don't think Equitus is going to be recasting that spell every few seconds. Right. So or I every need, minute. I would, <laughs> I would need to know when they were doing it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That that's that's more of a that's more of a uh, dungeon kind of uh, right. spell than a traveling spell. But good idea. Good idea, nonetheless. Uh, if Bella decides to do something that is really like a momentary check and not a continuous thing as you guys travel, then it, then then guidance might help. But uh, okay. I don't foresee that's not usually how this works. Okay. So that makes sense. Uh, does anybody else want to jump in and describe how they are helping the party? Right now, you guys have no check marks uh, or X's up on the board, so you're not making much progress. Since we're among trees right now. Oh. I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, I can find food and water, because that's my best skill. Okay. Well, other than lying to people, survival is my best skill. Mm. Uh, okay, so as you travel, you're going to try to forage. Uh, are you going to try to forage more in the desert and those kinds of uh, opportunities? Or are you going to really focus more as you guys he- are heading into these forested hills? And leaving the yeah, desert I'm behind. Yeah, I'm more on the forested hills. That's where I learned how to survive. Hmm, so. interesting. All right. Uh, sure. That. Uh, yeah, that could definitely help everybody. Um, go ahead and make a survival check then. Hmm. Uh, I... how important to your backstory are these forested hills? <laughs> I mean, it's mostly anything in the forest. That's where she she's in right. her element. But you, so, uh, what's your background? Outlander. You are an outlander. Uh, and the special ability of that has to do with navigation, doesn't it? Navigation and just the ability to provide for the, um, the survival of others. And you, uh, you're you an outlander who's from forested hills much like these, is what you're saying. Kind of on the edge of the desert, sparse trees giving way to more lush meadows between the hills. I'd say Krim's actually from the desert, but mm. she learned how to survive in the forest. Hmm. Well, where did she spend most of her time? She learned how to survive in the woods. So she has spent most of her time in the desert. Okay. But where she learned her skills, she was in the woods. Okay. <laughs> uh, sure. We'll give you advantage in this case. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a little iffy on that, but <laughs> uh, sounds like splitting the difference a little bit, but that's okay. Um, uh, we'll give you the 19. Uh, which is definitely ba, 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 a success. Uh, so nobody's going to have to spend any rations. Uh, we'll just be with that high of a roll and, and in this uh, more lush area uh, that you're heading into, you might need to nibble on some hard tack and dried uh, fruits and berries and uh, such in the morning. Uh, but when you get into the forest... Um, uh, Krim, what kind of animal, uh, would you catch? Um, probably squirrel, 
rabbit. Yeah. Okay. She she gets uh she gets a brace of conies and uh and a squirrel uh and they come pre cooked because she shoots them out of the tree. Uh, well, not the rabbits. Maybe the rabbits or any tree. These are magic conies, and uh, they have climbed a tree, uh, quite resting uh, resting quite comfortably until suddenly, bam! The fire bolt knocks them out of the tree with her outlander skills, and you guys have lunch for everybody and some leftover for dinner. Um, so you, uh, you, um, you, uh, you, you, you are able to provide, and that will certainly be a check mark. Uh, up on the uh, up on the parchment. So, anybody else? How are you going to help? That's what uh, Krim is spending her time doing: hunting, not going too far off the path, but whenever she gets the opportunity, kind of just a little bit looking around uh, and uh, uh, taking the opportunities as they come, because this is how the Outlanders uh, of the Wildlands survive anywhere. No matter how savage and uncivilized the terrain may be. Um, I can use my perception to just check out around us and make sure that mm. we're safe. That reminds me. Uh, what kind of pace are you guys going to set? I should have asked. I'm thinking normal. Medium. Normal. Yeah. Okay. Especially because we have uh, poor Kront with us. We don't want to, you know, force march the, the guy. And before I forget, hey, Kront, can I get that uh, sickle that I gave you? Can I let you borrow while, while we left you alone? We'll, we'll take care of you while, while you're here. I promise. Uh, uh, I don't really know how to use it anyway. He says in Orc. Okay, thanks. This, I mean, the sickle's kind of own brand for me. It's kind of important. And I put it my belt next to my I, hammer. I can't not know this word. Uh, forgive. Uh, what on brand? Um, it's, uh, you'll, you'll catch on. It's all right, Kront. Power. Power to the people. Kront will catch, yes. Uh, okay, Mavra. While ignoring that hilarity, uh, you are scouting around. Now, it's a normal pace, so there's no particular uh, advantages or disadvantages with perception. Um, you're going to scout for danger, and actually that will help you guys avoid danger, which is what I assume you would like to do. Um, uh, as you spot any dangerous-looking tracks... Uh, any movement among the uh, burgeoning uh, grasses and the gradually thickening foliage and trees. Uh, so go ahead and make your perception roll. A 16. Very nice. Uh, Mavra points out to you guys some bear scat. And you are able to uh, take a slight detour to avoid... Uh, you kind of glimpse in the distance uh, among the sparse trees a mother and cubs. Not something you necessarily wanted to take the time to tangle with. Uh, especially as there might even be other bears around. Uh, from what uh, from what Mavra has been spotting. There's definitely some heavy tracks. Uh, more than could be made by that one family alone. Uh, well done, Mavra. You guys have uh, th uh, two out of the three. You need to be safe. Uh, who else is going to jump in and try to help you guys travel? Um, Cordy would like to, um, I guess, like use her survival skills to ascertain how stable the ground is. And then if there's any area that we're going to be walking, um, she'd like to like grow a uh, grood craft like vines and such to help stabilize like roots if we're stepping over them or like anything that. Uh, could be dangerous. So bypassing the rocks of the desert and then um, as the terrain changes um, 
anything among the forested hills that could be tricky footing. Uh, Cordy is going to make it easier for everyone to travel. I'd buy that for sure. Um, all right, go for it. Natural 20. <laughs> oh my goodness. It is time to use this table that I've been working on. What does that mean? It's a natural oak coffee table. We're going to set some snacks on it. You guys just got three check marks with no, uh, with no X's. Uh, well done. And you are now in these forested hills. It's time to break out the table of fuck you anyway. I was going to say it's a table that we all get strapped to and tortured. So. Around you... and round again. Uh, the roll and round and round. Uh, roller of the natural 20. Please roll uh, a... I wonder if it'll let you roll a dice of with any number of sides. Uh, try rolling a d53. Please don't screw us over. No pressure or anything. Nice. Oh, cool. So, um, not only have you guys traveled extraordinarily well, and not only has Cordy, uh, you know, capped things off by making travel incredibly easy, uh, her expertise has guided you to a kind of a, uh, a kind of a, a, a dell, a, a sort of depression um, in the, near the top of a hill where there are some several tall, very green, despite the time of year, uh, trees. Um, these, uh, these trees don't seem to have lost their leaves. Uh, uh, uh unlike most, uh, around here in the, uh, in the winter time. Uh, and beneath these trees, uh, kind of, there's the remnants of a path, uh, which is partially what Cordy has kind of led you guys onto. It doesn't seem to lead anywhere else but here, uh, and you can't really follow it too far, except it's made... Uh, here and there, uh, you can see where it's made the pathway, uh, made your travel a little easier. Um, below these trees, in this dell, uh, is something rather interesting. Uh, you see as you approach, a great, uh, block of stone. Now, for a second, you think it's glowing, but then you realize... Uh, that it's just the light of the sun kind of playing through this semi-transparent onyx. Uh, and it's, it, this, this, it's like a block of onyx. It's been, it's been carved. It's very clearly man, uh, you know, man-made or man-affected. Um, uh, I, rather out of place. Uh, among the uh, kind of sparse grasses and uh, and surprisingly green trees. Or woman, yes, thank you, Kirsten. <laughs> um, uh, well, it's been clearly created, and it's it almost looks like uh, uh, you can see some objects left on the on along the top of it. Uh, it looks like a a shrine. Hey, can I make a religion check to see if I know what what it is? Uh, you it might make it easier if you approached closer and took a close look at the shrine. I do that. Okay. I'll, I'll uh, walk up there with her and, and help her out. Approaching closer, as I mentioned, it is man or woman made. Uh, definitely people made. Um, 
uh, kind of shrine. Um, and along the top, uh, there are there's a bunch of flowers. Um, not completely wilted, but they are winter uh, flowers. Um, there's some small coins in, a, in another pile. On another part, the, the whole thing, the effect is quite striking as the sun comes down through, uh, through the block of semi-transparent, um, uh, stone. And, uh, there's a silver thimble, intricately worked, uh, and a single earring. Um, all left as kind of separate offerings on this enormous block of stone. And, um... There is definitely, you're, you would not have been able to see this from a distance, but somehow there are footprints along the top of this shrine. Um, humanoid sized uh, footprints somehow melted into the surface of the altar. I'm getting like so Melted? Bad, but okay, let's check it out. Yeah, you can see where the the stone has like bubbled away from the footprints. Those are some very very hot feet. All right, let's check it out. Make a religion check. A religion check. Do I get advantage cuz Equitas? Yeah. I'll help her look, and if you, I mean, we can either, I can either give her advantage, or I can roll two, whatever we want, whatever we need to do. Uh, okay, uh, so the way I like to handle knowledge checks is anyone who's, uh, you know, who, who feels that their character would be interested, um, uh, you can kind of talk it over, and I'll let you all make a check. If you want to take the time to do this, I'll let you all make a check, and uh, and then you can use whoever's is highest. Sure. Uh, and great. the other people can assist. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'd definitely be interested, and in, I figure Kiri would also for sure. Yeah, Cordy's into religious stuff. Like Breath would not. <laughs> not even on a Sunday. One for me. Did we get the Easter Sunday bonus? Right. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna roll. I say roll on the uh, three or something. Everyone yeah, one, two, three, go. go. Oh. <laughs> oh. Cordy with the big religion head. What, what? <laughs> like all I can nerd I'd like to know that this is all very very in character like <laughs> <laughs> we've got the poor thing that is the poor sheltered thing with the lowest the, yeah uh, yeah and then the nature uh, the nature guru with the highest everything. why not so the three of you uh, Aquitus, Cordy, and Akiri, uh, you kind of talk it over, and you can use the highest, uh, one among you, which is the, uh, Cordy's done the most, uh, familiar with this, but, um, with that good roll, um, you'll be able to assist Aquitus. Uh, so that'll give her a plus two. So it's actually a extra. It's actually a twenty one um, total. Radical. Nice. Um. This is a shrine of the Seeker. Uh, Exant, uh, who is, uh, also, which is also the name, uh, 
of the uh, ninth month. The ninth month is called Seeker. Uh, our version of September. Um, the uh, Seeker is a god of travel, often prayed to by travelers. Um, and uh, very uh, pretty popular, uh, especially in the wildlands. Um, very admired uh, god. Uh, kind of has a lesser association with uh, music, uh, rhythm, marching songs. Um, kind of, uh, kind of a, a, a god followed by a great many bards. Um, it's likely that Bella would have, uh, heard of the Seeker. I've heard of every. And possibly known some who followed the Seeker as their kind of main patron. Um... Uh, let's see, you got a 21. Um, Seeker is known to be witty and independent. Uh, depicted in art as uh, kind of a small um, uh, non-binary person. Uh, athletic. Um... Not particularly flashy in dress. Um, and there's a few different types of places uh, for those calling uh, on the Seeker's aid. Um, but mostly uh, they are smaller shrines like this out in the wilderness. Uh, uh, or... Um, kind of, there are certain grand temples at, like, uh, trade centers. Uh, big cities where many different roads come and meet. Um, so fairly abundant worshippers, and it really, any, uh, anyone's, uh, going on a long journey, um, if they're familiar with the Seeker, might... Um, offer them a prayer. Uh, do you have any questions? You think it likely that um, this shrine, as it has been tended and seems to be um, you know, uh, seems to be uh, have some offerings already on it. Uh, it, it might very well be uh, be, uh, you know, have some some blessing associated with it. Well. I'm not offering him my bagpipes. I need those. <laughs> oh. Oh. Um. Toss a couple of uh, bronze coins onto the um, altar. Or whatever it is. Bronze coins? Sorry, the copper ones. The, the, I, sorry, I totally blank. Why not? Maybe you have some bronze coins from some faraway land or ancient empire. I have stuff. Um... Okay, so Akiri, you you will you will place uh, how many copper uh, pieces? Do three. Okay, reaching into uh, her um, her kind of pouch, Akiri places three copper coins uh, on their own little pile uh, off to uh, 
uh, in a row with the uh, with the other small offerings left there. Akira, you feel you feel it. Uh, it reminds you a little bit of praying to Jwerk and receiving your spells in the morning. Um, uh, a kind of a, but it's a, it has a different mm, flavor to it, if you will. Um, and, uh, and, uh, you definitely feel that your, your steps along this journey will be, uh, will be blessed. Uh, I'll write you a message. She's going to smile a little bit. Say thank you. Uh, okay, yes. You gain the... I'll just tell you. You gain the blessing of the Seeker. Um, which will let you re-roll any one die once. Ooh. Oh, that's nice. So mark that's that down. Nice. Write that down. So how does that make you feel? How do you feel? Did, did, do you think giving money, get, throwing that money was worth it? Or do you think it was just a waste? Because I have no idea what happened. Then she's going to smile and be like, I, I think it was worth it. He, he seems nice. Or they seem nice. I, I couldn't get a good flavor off of them, but they seem nice. I like them. Hmm. I feel like you work more, but like, they're they're pretty they're pretty cool. Hmm. But yeah, it's totally worth it. You should do something. I don't know. 10 out of that high. Sorry. Uh, Bella, I have a flute. And if you want to bring your bag bagpipes, we can play a duet. Sure, I'll try that. I don't know if a non-physical offering will work, but might as well try. All right, so I'll pull out my bagpipes and um, I guess just yeah, we play a duet to the altar. All right. Well, if you guys can sing, then uh, you know, if you're prepared, Wait. if you're prepared to lay down some song right now, then uh, the shrine will will accept it. Oh, you know, you know, you gotta do it. So. Uh, do I click on my flute and then roll? Is that how we're doing this? <laughs> oh, you wish. <laughs> sure. Oh, shoot. She's making a performance check and getting a 23. Bella's getting an 18. So a marvelous, rousing tune uh, rings across this lonely place. Uh... As the rest of you perhaps take lunch um, and enjoy this rousing song of flute and bagpipe. Uh, it, is, uh, it is marvelous to listen to and the, uh, the seeker seems well pleased uh, for you both gain the blessing of the seeker as well. Woohoo! So what time of day is it at this point? Uh, what time of day? Yeah, I'm wondering how long we've been traveling. Um, it is uh, getting to be the evening now. This seems like a fairly peaceful and uh, restful place. Do we want to uh, bunk down here or do we want to press on a little further? It might be smart to wait here, because this seems like a relatively safe spot. 
The got only thing here. I'm worried about is this also might be a relatively well traveled spot. That's all. I mean, this is the guy who's traveling. Good places where money's laying out just for anybody to grab generally are good targets. The only thing is that we, as we get closer into Taurine, we're gonna have to go through the desert again and we'll have more cover. Oh man, Haley, you kind of broke up there pretty bad. Did your internet go down? No, it's just uh, the voice connection thing. Yeah, yeah. Discord playing funky with you. Uh, could you say that again? Uh, we'd have to travel through the desert to make it back to Tori. We have more cover in the forest. Well, um, I, I mean, I think, well, it stands to reason that, you know, yeah, this might be a more well-traveled area. That could really cut both ways. I mean, there might be more people who are willing to do us harm out here, but that also means that we might be closer to help. That's true. And also, if it's more well-traveled, that sometimes that does keep the bad guys away. So... Maybe just not right here under, in the shadow of, of this altar. Maybe out, you know, into the woods a little. Sure, but, we can do like a scouting check to see if there's a place that's like relatively well hidden. Yeah. Uh, really, the best hidden place around here is this dell. Uh, I took uh, quite a bit of woodcraft. Uh, for you guys, we're all working together to even find this shrine. Oh, okay. Let's well, it's that hard to find. Yeah, let's 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 do it. Let's just bed down here. Okay. I mean, three out of seven of us have been blessed by the god, so maybe that'll help us if anyone tries shenanigans. That's a good point. Make sure you guys uh, write down Blessing of the Seeker. Okay, I've got it in a doc at the moment. And what does it, uh, what does it do again? You can reroll one die once. Does it last until it's used? There's no, like, time limit? As far as you know. I mean, I don't have it, but just, you know, for other people. As far as they know. Uh, okay. So you guys make camp here. It's peaceful. Uh, you're able to, uh, consume the remainder of the rabbits and squirrels and, uh, supplement that with rations and whatever else you have, uh, in your packs. Perhaps, uh, still some of those apples that you found in the desert. Um... That night... <laughs> no birds. Uh, that night, um, who's going to be on the first watch? I'll do it. I'll stay up with breath. All right. The two of you are on watch as dusk fades into twilight. And uh, things get dark, and the uh, everyone starts to drift off to sleep on their bed rolls and or in a tent, whatever you have, however you travel. Um, go ahead and make perception rolls.
So as everyone is sleeping, everyone but you two, um, Aquatus, what's distracting you? Or have you just chosen a poor spot? Um, I mean, I'm feeling better. I mean, I do have things on my mind, obviously, from what we've experienced in the, in the cave, in the dungeon. Um, mm. So that, plus probably just, just kind of just not looking in the right place at the right time. Look. All right. Breath's pointing at something like, it's right, it's right there. It's right there. And Equitas is like, where? Uh, Breath, could you just describe real quick how you are watching? Um, so after, uh, after those uh, ants were bothering us last night, well, not really bothering us, but they were coming pretty close. I'm a little, uh, <laughs> if you'll pardon the pun, a little antsy, and so I'm actually kind of wandering around the edges of this uh, clearing to make sure that uh, nothing is, is going to break our perimeter. Cool. So you're wandering around. So I guess, are, are you guys kind of camping in like a circle Is that what you're is that what you're telling me a little bit? Probably. It makes the most sense under fire. Uh, okay, so you kind of have a loose circle and and breath. You're you're walking around the edge, using the light of the moon and the uh, the low fire. That's you know you guys are periodically perhaps Equitus is feeding the fire and thinking about what happened in the in the dungeon. Equitus would probably be into that. He likes fire, probably. I can see that. That would be distracting to him, for sure. Uh, and Breath, you're walking around the edge. Keeping pretty good watch. Uh, of course, it's a little difficult for you because you don't see in the dark. Like your friends. Images like I'm more keeping an eye out for general movement and sounds. Or like certain things you have faced. There are movements and sounds, yes. Squirrels running through the night, uh, night birds calling. Um, and uh, but even as careful as you're being As careful as you're being, you don't quite hear, see, or smell them until these hunters are on you. Like the sound of that. Same. I am struggling to find uh, breath. The the first thing you're aware of it. The first moment you're aware of it, it's just shapes in the shadows, uh, down uh, downwind of you. Hey, uh, Equitus, I think there's something out here. 
Uh, you, you're not going to have time to say much. Just a second. What? Uh, just a second. I thought I had something set up properly, but I did not. Uh, and I'm just, give me a second so I can set this up right. Equitus, there you are feeding the fire. Um, who has a tent? I have a tent, but I'm not in it, so I would have let someone else use it. Same goes for Equitus. All right. Who is using your tent? I mean, you are, you are going to need it at some point. <laughs> I think, well, I, I mean, I don't think any of us really need it at this point. So, yeah, I would say, I guess I could say that it's just empty at this point. I screwed up and made you guys part of the background. Try that again. Uh, it's just empty at this point. Oh. Yeah. Uh, everybody else, you have at least got a bedroll, I hope. Yeah. Yes. I feel like with Cordy, it makes more sense for her to, like, not sleep on anything, but I don't know how that mechanically works for the sleeping aspect of the game. I mean, makes... she has a tent a bedroll, but... Mm -hmm. But you feel like she would want to sleep out in the open? I think so. Like, closer to nature. I think that makes sense. She's like a hermit. I mean, I guess. <laughs> Maybe she also likes being comfortable. <laughs> but I feel like she would be more comfortable, like, just with, close to Earth. She's like half mushrooms. Yeah, like, my head is, like, half fungus. <laughs> I, I, I've seen her become all mushroom, I okay. swear. Uh, well, perhaps that's spiritually uh, fulfilling, but not necessarily the most restful. Um, actually, Equitus, yeah, there you are. Okay. Uh, so there are a couple of tents that are set up, uh, but no one is in them. Is that right? How many people can fit in a tent? Just one? Uh, I believe they fit two. Uh, it says in the in the player's handbook. Yeah, you're right. Um, if it fits two, I mean, I, I'd be happy to share mine with someone. And I'll I should them. probably go to the... I mean, is there still a role where the spellcasters have to get uninterrupted sleep or whatever? No, not really. Uh, by the way, your tent color choices are green and gray. Or snow covered. Come on, green. We should have gotten the snow covered one. It would have helped in the desert. <laughs> There's uh, not a hot pink one? Uh, not, no. Or that ugly hunter orange? You could go have that specially made. Um, I, can use, I can use thaumaturgy on it, can I? Sure. That's a joke, no. Uh, okay. 
All right. Well, if uh, no one else claims a tent, I will. <laughs> okay. So perhaps Bella's in uh, Cordy's tent and she doesn't want it. Totally. Akiri Bella will... thinks that's a tragic waste. What's that, Akiri? Akiri will go in with Bella and be like, "You know, screw this." Here, Cordy, I, you can sleep in this mushroom circle. That makes sense. Trim's fine out in the open with her bedroll. Mm-hmm. At least as long as it's not raining. It does get pretty cold, so don't forget that. Uh, what was I doing? I was setting up another tent. So, Bella, you're in this tent. Okay. Right. Okay. I'll say since it gets cold, uh, Crim's near the fire. Okay. All right, so Bref, you were kind of walking around the perimeter, you said. So something like this? Yeah, I mean, probably not straight through the middle of the tree, um, mm. probably on the inside, but otherwise, yeah, basically. Okay, would your current position make sense to you, given that? Yes. I mean, if, if that's where I saw shapes, like towards the south there, I probably would have stopped where I was and watched them. You, you, it's more like a hint of movement. And then out of the shadows comes a whispered word and an attack. Poop. Watch out, they're whispering! <laughs> Attack of the Asmers. Uh, never saw them coming. They move like they can see in the dark, for one thing. Uh, they're dressed in uh, sort of skins. Uh, and they stink. Remember how I said they came from downwind? Uh, there's a whispered word in an angry series of <sighs> grunts, and uh, you see the flash of blades. Uh, they're dressed as hunters. They're wearing uh, skins, um, but also warriors. They have shields. Um, and uh, they carry kind of uh, hunting uh, gear. They have they have like hunting bows and arrows, uh, and uh, and you see these kind of painted marks on uh, on their skin. Um, uh, 
uh, at least that describes uh, five of these shapes. Uh, this one is dressed rather differently uh, in almost uh, a, a different kind of uh, a tunic and hunting, um, like a hunting uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, getup, uh, and has this kind of uh, eye painted over uh, over his forehead and has this enormous conch shell hanging around his neck. Also with an eye kind of burned or etched onto it. So he's in charge. Possibly. Can we find a boar to kill? What? <laughs> boar of the flies. Oh. <laughs> Um, uh, they are saying something in a language I don't think Breath understands. Uh, does he, s now they look a little bit like, uh, an orkier version of Krant. Uh, Breath does speak orc. Does he? Uh, then you hear them whispering, get the prey, young one. And the first one that strikes you does indeed, it's in this sort of flash in the firelight that you see, it does look indeed look a little younger uh, than the rest of them. I need to roll some attacks. Oh, where's Kron? Speaking of Kron. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kron betrayed us. Mm, where is, is Kron? one of these dudes Kron? <laughs> uh, no, no. Uh, did you guys give him a tent? He can, he can, I'll sleep, he can sleep in mine with me. Alright, so there's Krant. Does he really have that weapon? Uh, no. He has a okay. walking stick. Okay. Alright. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Actually, this is a better Krant. Um, okay. Okay, buddy. All right. Uh, yes, I'm attacking Breath. Um, the young one who attacks first totally flubs his attack. Uh, even with you basically not really defending yourself, the, uh, the, the orc uh, hesitates for a split second and you're able to kind of like startle and reach for your uh, weapon um, you're still going to get attacked before you can uh, be, really be ready but uh, but he his attack, uh, I mean it's a 12 I don't think that hits you, does it? 12 does not hit okay um I need to attack you uh, two more times. But I have advantage. These orcs seem a little more seasoned. Uh, and the first one strikes you with his blade. Uh... Um, and slashes across your shoulder, dealing four slashing damage. Uh, the one on the other side of you goes in saying, You're gonna have to do better than that, young one. In orc. These are hulking, beefy uh, guys with decorated with bones and teeth from various kills. They're wearing these hefty furs. Uh, against the the chill, and as I mentioned, they're carrying all kinds of hunter gear. Uh, this guy, yeah, he got a twenty four to hit you, um, and he gets he deals eleven slashing damage. So this one goes right across the shoulder blades, drawing a line of 
fire of pain across your back. Um, the others seem ready with either uh, uh, swords or javelins, although they haven't uh, quite had time to attack as of yet. But this one raises uh, a hand. Um... And what happens? Stand by. He says, wait, wait, we thought you were dear. Never mind, we'll go now. And everyone's happy. Here, have 500 gold for our, your trouble. <laughs> we do not know how much bandages cost. Cannot be more than what? One, 200 gold? Hmm. A piece. Here's a hundred dollars. Go see a Star War. Uh, you hear that chanting? Don't know what you're talking about. I mean, yeah, but he chants a few words. Guys, I found the cleric. Um, and a uh, a kind of a a, a, a a cold fear clutches around your heart. Uh, I'm gonna need you to make a wisdom saving throw. I'm just glad it's not intelligence. Ten. Okay, Bref. You realize you need to run. You need to get out of here. Uh, it's scary. Uh, you are going to... Uh, you are going to become... Frightened. Uh, and you're going to need to move away from him. This... This contrarer. Uh, on your on your next turn. And speaking of which, uh, did you in fact want to shout out as you uh, as you kind of indicated earlier? I think I would probably say, "Hey, I think there's something out," and then at that point I would get hit, and mm -hmm. the spell would take effect, and I would just go. Ah! <laughs> So at Bref's uh, girlish scream of fear, uh, uh, anyone who wants to can select their character and roll initiative. Krant is probably going to stay in the tent because he is not a combatant. Or he's not much for, for fighting. Nor does he want to tangle with full-blooded orcs. We got this, buddy. You just stay stay safe. I sort of flash hand signs at him because I don't speak his language. Oh, wait, he speaks a little common. Oh, man. If they had dropped breath, imagine if they had dropped breath immediately and then dragged him off into the night and Equitus would be like, huh, what? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Yeah, you guys, guys are, are you guys are lucky. Uh, you guys are lucky. Breath rolled pretty okay. Okay, I gotta roll for them. Uh, 
All right, let's see. Um, uh, anyone who's not sleeping in a tent. Um, you're definitely, uh, well, no, really, anyone who is sleeping is probably going to have, you know, going to be groggy for a few seconds. Uh, as you're awakened by this scream. Um, we'll say that those in the tent um, are a little less groggy because you were able to sleep without the uh, uh, without the distractions of, uh, of the night, but you are going to have to get out of a tent. Uh, so that's a bit of a, an impediment. Uh, those who are sleeping outside of tents, um, I'm going to ask you to make a check uh on your turn to see if you're groggy um uh cordy uh since you uh have connected sleeping outside to uh kind of a, a being a spiritual thing uh for you you'll still be uh have the potential to be groggy uh but uh we'll say that uh, your spells get a bit of a boost uh, in cool. the first round of combat. Good deal. All right. So, uh, perhaps unsurprisingly, Bref is the first to react, uh, as he has now been slashed and hacked from either side. Um, DM, this tree in the upper left corner here, is it? Uh, would any of that be considered difficult terrain? On ground level? Uh, yeah. If you get in toward, um, the four squares, uh, in the corner, that'll be difficult. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is head up, because I have to dash. Sorry, guys, got a dash. Mm -hmm. I think I can make it to there. I'm gonna um, imagine somewhere around there is the trunk of the tree, and I'm gonna try and, like, press my back against it with like a so my back is towards the camp like <gasps> he can't be following me <laughs> so you actually just charged into a bunch of branches and, like, ah, oh, yeah. and then you back you know you press yourself as best you can kind of entangled in these branches uh, and yeah get away from me <laughs> indeed alright so you are pressed up against that tree trunk and cowering so breath guys just ran, and you guys sh see these shadowy fingers, these orc hunters uh, in the twilight, uh, and they're laughing. <laughs> and uh, one of them um, says in common, Fresh meat! And Breath just ran. Uh, okay, I think that's the end of Breath's turn, so, Akiri. screaming is absolutely going to wake her up and mm. she's gonna oh, what? and jump out of the t jump up scramble out of the tent and take a look at what's going on over here and... all right so you poke your your beak uh, your face out of the tent and you take it you take it in you can kind of make out you don't have dark vision either uh, so it's a little hard for you to see these guys in the uh, in the the dimmer light of the campfire. Right. Um, can I see the the caster out there? You're not sure that he's a caster. Uh, you see a number of figures, and he is the hardest to see one, being the most obscured. Okay, so whoever I can see the clearest, I'm gonna sacred flame him. All right, that would be this guy. You can actually see him pretty clearly. Sorry, which one? I had my character sheet open. <laughs> right here. This guy you can see pretty clearly. Cool. Sorry, this one or this one? I still can't see your pings. Uh, that guy's not supposed to be there. Uh, this one. You should be seeing my arrow. Uh... I was trying to show that he is within 20 feet of the campfire. Uh, so 
Uh, his grayish green skin is lit up quite well by the flickering flames as compared to the rest of them. All right, so yeah, whoever's closest, I'm going to sacred flame. And I'd love to roll it, but my roll 20 is being a butt. So give me two seconds and I'll see what we get. Sorry, more like 15 or 20 because my internet is terrible tonight. And I'm so sorry, guys. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Uh, Bref, real quick, I uh, had the diagonal set wrong on this page, but we're not going to change your move. It was just the extra boost of fear driving me. Exactly. Will you Bref or DM, will you ping Bref? I've lost him. Yeah, well, so has Equitus. Oh... That's why I lost He it. is hiding among the All brambles right. and uh, trees there. Uh, okay, so I think I, I think uh, Emmy had to refresh. We will come back around to your turn. And then come back, and I'm salty about it. But anyways, um, okay. yeah, we're going to Sacred Flame, the closest son of a gun. Okay, he tries to dodge out of the way as the power of Jewerks celebration very anti uh being hunted in the night uh he tries to dodge out of the way and gets a 13. i think my save's 14 so he gets hit by two freaking radiant damage okay um two radiant damage uh he shrugs that off <clears throat> um But he doesn't seem to like it. Uh, little birdie. Rock blickens. I don't think you speak orc. Nope. Uh, fear. Fear the eye. Uh, Krim. Oh, no, wait. Akiri, did you want to move or do anything else? Nope. I'm, I'm good. I'm at the back of the fight. Krim's turn. All right, so I'm going to try a new spell. I'm going to do Scorching Ray. All right, can you make a quick uh, constitution saving throw to see if you're groggy as you first wake up? Okay, sure thing. You have a plus five to your constitution saving throw? Yes. And I still managed to frickin' roll an eight. <laughs> you managed to frickin' roll an eight. <laughs> yes. Krim has a potty map. Uh, okay, well, you just weren't ready for this. So you are, in fact, groggy. So that'll give you disadvantage. Okay, I'm still gonna do Scorching Ray. Oh, 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 okay. So, so I'm groggy. Let me do Magic Missile, because I know that hit. Indeed. So mark off a uh, first level slot. Uh, Magic missile is not a. It's not a cantrip. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. So, I'm gonna do all three of those into the magic guy. Okay. The purple darts of Crim's power go slamming into him. Boom! 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 Ugh. He's, he's kind of twisted from side to side by the three blows, and he says, the, Beware! This prey is tough! He says that in Orc, for anyone who understands Orc. It just I sounds like... Orc, and I'd be all back in Orc damn right. <laughs> so that's 12 damage to him. Very nice. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm just going to move back to like one diagonal. Maybe. Okay, you're kind of unsteadily moving back. 
uh, as you as you recover from the grogginess, you'll be fine next turn. Um, but uh, I like how Jeremy's removed his glasses. It's somehow very apropos for the moment. Um, and uh, and uh, yeah, you you unsteadily step back and kind of stumble on that rock, but you are you uh, you you are you are getting getting a clearer picture of what's going on as these orc hunters come closing in. Equitus, your turn. All right. I'm going to move up about 10 feet. Well, let me... Um, so... Okay. Which one is the guy with the cock? Is it this guy or this guy? Uh, Sorry. I didn't see the pings. Uh, the one with the conk. Is it this guy or this guy? The second one. The one in okay. the, the blue kind of hunting tunic uh, okay. is wearing okay. an enormous conch shell. Uh, okay. The one that you first pinged has just been blasted by radiant fire. Okay. All right, so I'm going to move up about... Lasers. About... 15 feet and then I am going to send a uh, an Eldritch Blast with acid at Conky <laughs> alright uh, and that's and I've, I've done all the math for, for my stuff I think except I didn't add the plus one for attacks and damage for the Gesh so that would really be a 12 to hit Uh, I think I've, I've added all the all the stuff that I that I need to accept that to, to roll twenty. Uh, he weaves from one side to the other side, and uh, you miss. Oh, the blast of eldritch and acid damage goes bubbling away into the rock just to just uh, that he's standing on, just to his all feet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Clear angrily right back at him in, in my turn. Cordy, your turn. Alright, um, Cordy is gonna... M make a constitution select... saving throw as you wake up. Constitution. 13. You're not groggy. You're awake. Cool. She's you just gonna roll up. up. <laughs> that dude and she's going to conjure a flaming scimitar <laughs> whoa in her hand yes she is um <laughs> and okay. uh, she's gonna use her action to attack with it um i just need to figure out how to do that in roll 20 so give me like 30 seconds <laughs> uh, i feel like i'm not seeing a way to do. I guess I do. I have to like add. Did I have to add that manually? I guess to do like a spell attack. Um. Well, it's not a. Is it a spell attack? It's a. It says a melee spell. Melee attack. spell attack. Uh yeah, I guess since this the attack isn't made as part of the spell, it's not automatically yeah. entering it for you. Uh, yeah. It might show. Hang on. It might. Uh, did you add the spell to your spell book? Um. I I I entered it into like just like the general spells, but not into. I didn't add anything onto like the first page where like it my, has like my dagger and like quarter. God, and, like, you have a lot of attacks. attacks. What? You have a lot of attack options. I do. I'm. Um, I mean, I can try to add it. It would just take a second. To yeah, no, you don't have to worry about that right now. Let's just roll the dice. So roll yeah. a d twenty. Okay. <laughs> I can tell you that's probably gonna miss. But for future reference, uh, your spell attack bonus is uh, when you go to the spells page. It's in the top right hand corner spell attack bonus 
Okay. So that's what you'd be adding to your two. Yeah. All right. And, uh, what is that? A seven? Uh, an eight. Because okay. my is my stack is a six, so it would be eight. But that definitely doesn't hit. Uh, okay, so the fiery blade surprises the orc. <clears throat> but he holds up his shield and <clears throat> scrapes across the front of it. Uh, this hunter is not so easily put off, it seems. And just so you know, it illuminates ten feet around me. Oh, and that is good to know. ten feet are dim beyond that. So I guess it affects twenty feet, but the first ten feet are bright, and then the next ten feet are dim. Those of you who do not have dark vision, you can now see this guy more clearly. Thank you. Yep. Um, as another ambient light source picks up, it's their turn. They kind of let out a howl. <laughs> and they rush in. They seem to have some kind of ability to just charge in and almost like pouncing cats uh these big muscular orcs can move surprisingly quickly uh across this rough ground um this guy's going to cut uh through the tree here and in get into combat with mavra This guy's going to run up and uh, get into combat with Equitus. And again, they move really fast. I smell a cleric. Not supernaturally fast. They just seem to never miss a step. They're sure-footed. Um, and, uh, Cordy, you're being surrounded as well. And they launch their attacks. Um, okay, so they have advantage. They are flanking. Uh, so, uh, Equitus... The young one, uh, which I believe is next to you, is attacking you and missing badly. Uh, oh. All right here, young uh, Yes, he also provoked from Cordy. So, Cordy, you're going to get a free attack on him. With your scimitar. It's you. Fuck him up, Cordy. So can I attack with the thing I'm holding, or do I have to? Is that like cool? Yeah, like yeah, thing? yeah. You you you're holding okay. a flaming of of a sword made of fire. <laughs> Rad. <laughs> oh, oh my yeah. god. Woo! <laughs> Two twenties, bitch. Uh, if you send me a uh, an MP3 file at some point, uh, with your with your uh uh your theme song, this is when I would play it. When you roll. Your second natural 20 of uh, the session. Uh, amazing. Okay, roll the damage. Oh my Dang. god. That's disgusting. Hey, so you know that weak attack he just made, Equitus? That was while uh, a burning point of a sword goes erupting from his chest puncturing his uh, hides that he wears and setting them alight. And he lets out a... And smoke comes out of his mouth in a big plume as Cordy rips the sword of fire out of his chest and he collapses on the ground, writhing, burning, dead. Smoking kills, guys. (laughs) Uh, and so, the other attack, the attack that is going against Equitas, does not That's have advantage. Me, you get my homegirl, too, son. Equitas, you have your braces on, so I think so. Uh, you are probably not going to be hit by a 10. Nope. Uh, Mavra. You can see in the dark, right, Mavra? So, uh, this guy gets a natural one. And he takes this swipe at you. 
but he's not used to fighting dwarves, and it's a foot over your head. Just whoosh, to you don't even have to duck. It's that, uh, it's that inept of an attack. He seems distracted by all of the crazy magic being thrown around, perhaps. Uh, or just not used to fighting dwarves. And uh, that is definitely a big old whiff. Uh, they're, uh, after their initial surprise, they don't seem to be doing quite as well. But now, the guy with a conch shell, or a conch shell, as it seems... Um, Raises his hand once again. Um, and uh, he says, uh, Attack! And uh, the guy over here uh, who is damaged is going to get another attack. <laughs> uh, he kind of clutches the uh, the conch shell when he uh, when he yells this as well. Uh, Cordy, will a 16 hit you? Yes. I am not very strong. He thrusts forward with his sword. Uh, that will deal 10 damage. As the, uh, as the blade slices in uh, and through your side. Um, this one is going to kind of get a better vantage point up on the rock. And he's kind of using the rock... Uh, he kind of slides back down uh, it after kind of taking a better look. So now he, you can only really see the very top of his head. He's hes mostly obscured by the boulder. Has he lost sight of me? Uh, no. Uh, because you can still see the top of his head over the boulder. But, but I'm as, he, as he finishes his turn... Uh, the the magic fades. You are no longer supernaturally terrified, although perhaps naturally so. That is up to you. Bella, it's your turn. Alrighty. Your fl friends are bleeding and fighting. So I guess I come out of the tent. So can I clearly see I'll wind up there. Can I clearly see the guy with the conch shell or I do have dark vision. He probably has like three quarters cover. He's behind the rock. He is right. very tough to see and you just emerged from the tent. Uh, you're seeing him mostly as a shadowy shape. The orcs in it lit up by either the flaming sword uh, their burning companion or the uh, or the campfire are a lot clearer to your eye. Okay. Um, well, that puts that right out. All right, I'm gonna go ahead. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cast a spell. All right. Fairy fire. Right over there. Screw that guy. So you're hit, you're just hitting this guy then. Yeah. Up. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's a 20-foot cube, and he's the guy who... You say that I can tell that someone's there and that he's very hard to see, so it makes sense that I would try to make him easier to see. All right. 
poof, you reach out with your power and hurl out a fairy fire spell. He'll try to dodge out of the way. Uh, he gets a 12. That will fail. In that case, he's like, what is this crap? As he is now outlined in what color? Bright purple. Bright purple. Ah! Get it off me! I don't like this! <sighs> Foul magics. So girly and dumb! That's, that's foul magics for you, super girly. I would like to say Krim is now personally offended because she loves purple. <laughs> yeah, so does Equitus. And he's a magic user. Mm. Yeah. Um, yes. Um, I just I just remembered, so uh, Flame Blades of Concentration, so I think I need to make a check. Oh, a is damage. it? Yeah. Yeah. So is that constitution? It's a constitution saving constitution? throw. Okay. All right, so that drops. Ooh, that sucks. Yeah. That'll affect shooting, but it's not a big deal. You guys have right. really good hidden, so. Most of these guys yeah. are now close enough it. to the campfire that at least they're still being seen. But yeah, you got you got your amazing hidden and insta-gibbed one guy. So... He is dead, and uh, it seems the hunting party's young one in training, orc in training, was uh, not uh, not very successful first outing. He's uh, as old as he'll ever be. Uh, yeah, he's got a big smoking hole in him uh, through the middle. So, I uh, definitely accomplished a lot with that spell. Uh, Bella, are you moving at all or doing anything else? Uh, no, I've already moved. Mavra, your turn. And I have to do a groggy check. Uh, you just woke up, correct? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> uh, yeah, you are actually still lying on your bedroll. Well, no wonder that guy missed him. Her. Uh, yeah, yeah. He he took a wild swing at you and and really really whiffed. Uh, so you, uh, not only that, you're going to have to stand up, um, which will use up half of your movement. Uh, your constitution save is a success, so you are not groggy, Mavra. You are instantly awake, your eyes wide. Uh, so you stand up, I assume, pick up your weapons. Uh, now what? Okay, I'm going to attack this guy behind me. I think he's the one that attacked me before, but I'm not sure. This one attacked yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, oh. Total of 20. A solid hit with the Warhammer. Go ahead and roll damage. Ten bludgeoning, a very powerful hit. You cave in uh, part of his shield and through his armor and deal damage to the orc himself. <sighs> he lets out a, a grunt as, uh, as it knocks the wind out of him. A powerful blow and an excellent place to pause uh, in this session as it is late and uh, we've got work in the morning, so... Uh, thank you all for joining me. Jeremy, Emily, Paul, Alexis, Haley, Danielle, and Kirsten. You guys are amazing players. Uh, that was a short and sweet session, and we're going to be able to pick it up next week with this, uh, you know, nighttime ambush uh, from a gang of orc hunters uh, that happened upon your camp. So that will certainly be interesting. Uh, yeah, uh, we will be skipping next weekend. Unfortunately, I hate to do it, but, uh, uh, Kirsten and I are moving house. 
So we will just not be able to play, but we will pick up the following week. Uh, hopefully everyone, everyone will have forgotten everything and the orcs will wipe you out. And uh, that'll be a dramatic end to the campaign. No, I really hope that doesn't happen. Um, we'll stay in communication and uh, in contact. And who knows? Maybe we'll we'll spontaneously decide, like, hey, why don't we play on, like, a weeknight or something crazy? Uh, although I don't anticipate that happening. Um, but you never know. Uh, thank you to everyone watching. Uh, uh, thank you for hanging out, chatting, and uh, checking out our game. Um, and we're going to go off the air now. So, good night. Thank you.